Hey guys, it's your girl Lexi London. I'm just coming at you with a quick gossip video because because these things are haunting me and I just want to get them off my chest and tell you what I think about these things. So let's go. The first thing I want to talk about is Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is currently on what two months break now? If you count from Christmas all the way to now, I think she's on a two month break. Due to breaking her arm, she said, in her grave disease. Reports from the National Enquirer are saying by her mother-in-law, her, her husband's mama, that he has been abusing her badly for years. And she saw her choke her and push her down a flight of stairs. I've been listening to Wendy Williams since I was like 12 years old because my mother was a listener of WBLS. If you're not older than me, there was no Instagram, so you just had the radio playing all day, and Wendy Williams was hilarious. i never forget the Whitney Houston interview, but you can look that up if you like. But it's been rumored that her husband was beating her for years. Even with her and Charlamagne, remember Charlamagne, he was black and mad ugly and like a leprechaun, but anyway. He used to say that Wendy's husband was beating her. A lot of staff used to report that he was beating her. He was having sex with most women. Even in her book, I read her book, Don't Judge My Mother bought all of her books and I read them. She talks about him cheating in the book and her drug use. This is what I believe about Wendy Williams, allegedly. I am a fan of Wendy Williams. Just in the fact that she's a black woman who runs her mouth and talks shit. <laughs> I like that. And then I also like Wendy Williams. As you notice, I'm a tall black woman. So that's another reason I like Wendy Williams because it gave me hope that one day, because you know, we see a lot of doofy bitches on TV that's not Giselle or Amato. So that gave me hope with Wendy Williams. My prayers are for her because I do feel she is being abused, used, mistreated. It also claims that she might be like suffering because he's got his mistress, Karina. I forgot her name. You might as well call her Karina Hunter. At this point, she is fucking the second wife. They have sister wives at this point, allegedly. And I just feel bad for Wendy. She's dating a man from Brownsville. I work in Brownsville. I see the destruction here. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But this is a very damaged man. And he's just using this woman to get to the top. He saw her as a meal ticket the first day he met her. He, he never loved her. And I just had to say that he never loved her. And I, I never get why Wendy Williams stays because she always comes across as such a strong woman. But, you know, I'm into astrology. She is a cancer. Cancers are emotional. Ooh, my light is leaving. The sun is going down. Cancers are emotional. And they are soft. So she talks hard, but at home she's all pink and soft, and she says that all the time. So I just want to send prayers out to Wendy, because I'm a little worried for her. Shouldn't it be like a safety check to make sure she's alive? Um, a few people in my, in my inbox are saying she was taken by Illuminati. They think I'm a cloner. By this point, she should be a cloner already, you know? I don't really know about the Illuminati and the cloning shit, but I do believe that this smoke is fire, so I just want to leave that alone. So that this, so the rumor is that she didn't hurt herself because you know she fractured her arm. She didn't hurt herself. They're saying her husband possibly beat her allegedly. His mother said that he, she has witnessed him extremely beat her bad, and his mistress is supposedly pregnant. I know his mistress is now currently missing in the house she lived in, which is like a mile or so away from Wendy's current house that she shares with her husband. Is being sold. So hopefully when Wendy, when he got that girl pregnant, she was like, you know, you beat my ass, you cheat on me, you have side chicks, but now you're gonna get a bitch pregnant? And you know how hard it was for me to have these kids after I had all these abortions in my life? Unfortunately. So my prayers are to Wendy Williams. I hope she gets strong. I hope she comes back, because I ain't gonna lie. Every day I come home, I turn to Wendy Williams show, and I'm like, what the fuck? Where this bitch at? And it's to the point where it's a habit, because my mother, Sometimes I don't even listen to just background noise, like she says. But I pray for Wendy Williams. I don't see how it's funny if a woman is being abused by a man who's big as fuck. And it's even reports that he soundproofed their bedroom so he could beat her while his son is in the house. That's some real sick shit, y'all. So I pray for Wendy Williams, and I hope she's okay, and I hope you come back. And I hope you leave this nigga. You don't need this nigga. You'll be fine without this nigga. Yo, Wendy motherfucking Williams. So anyway, I want to move on. To Lori Harvey. I do not know who the fuck Lori Harvey is, but she is in a Meek Mill song that I hear on the radio every day. And it says, I got Lori Harvey on my wish list, my wish list. I Googled Lori fucking Harvey. Lori Harvey is Steve Harvey's Steve Harvey's wife 
daughter. I know Steve Harvey's daughters are tight because they never got to use his name the way these bitches is using his nigga name. I know his first wife and, and first children are just like beyond pissed. Like this bitch Marjorie just came up in here and made a legacy for herself and her fucking kids. Like my kids are Harvey's bitch. Lori last name is probably not Harvey because I'm pretty sure she has a daddy. And she's taking advantage of this like her mother who trained her to be an opportunist. And it's not wrong with being an opportunist, bitch. It's not wrong with being an opportunist, but call yourself an opportunist. fucking tunist. She's allegedly dating Trey Songs. I don't know if you saw a picture of her or a video of her and Trey Songs. It was paparazzi and they took a picture and she ducked down. And his face was like, bitch, why are you ducking down? And then Future, did you see the video with Future saying you ducked too late? So this 21-year-old girl has the attention of three grown-ass men. Future has like 10, 6 kids that's almost her age. The part is I'm truly... Forget the fact that she's Steve Harvey's wife daughter. Forget the fact that it's just that she, who she's fucking. The part is she is 21. We just was roasting R. Kelly last fucking week and now we letting niggas. So that mean Trey Songz met her about a year ago. So she was about 20. The reason niggas is keeping it a secret is because they're trying to wait for her to get older and older and er older. Trey Songz is 13 years older than her. Future is older than Trey Songz. This shit is nasty. This is nasty. And nothing, and when you look at her, nothing is really, she's not an ugly girl, but she's a basic ass bitch. She's like a little girl. The part that people, I think, are finally attracted by her is her innocence, which is real fucking disgusting to me and real R. Kelly-like. We don't, we, we only judge R. Kelly because bitches is complaining, but we, not, we let these black men still, still right in front of us fuck these young bitches. Like, you know, nobody thinks this is fucking nasty. This girl's 21. She doesn't have any ass. She, she's just a skinny ass, regular ass girl, flat chested ass girl. Not hating on the girl at all, but just saying she's nothing special about her besides the fact that she looks like an innocent ass little girl. She looks like a 12, 13 year old girl. So niggas is attracted to her because her youthfulness. So niggas is attracted to a 13 year old body and a 13 year old girl, allegedly. That's all I'm saying. You could Google it if you want. I'll insert some pictures in this bitch. But y'all need to Google it. Maybe I need to start telling how tops I see between this shit. Y'all just be seeing what niggas say. You gotta look between that shit. And the last problem I bring about Lori Harvey is that um, I don't think these men, I think these men are dating her because, you know, her mother's teaching her that to fuck your way to the top like I did, you know. But at the same time, I think that Steve Harvey is telling these men to rap about her and talk about her and make it her relevant so she can get her own bag because you know he's taking care of a lot of Marjorie's children they need to start bringing in their own income you know Steve Harvey rich but he ain't rich rich he all right he doing good but he ain't rich rich he ain't no fucking Bill Gates you know so he can't be taking care of niggas forever and they having children and shit with bitches so he gotta get all these kids on so he probably was like Trey do me a favor I won't tell nobody you gay fake date my daughter but Future was hurt you know Future has a harem of bitches and he hate when his bitches talk to other niggas even though he got harem of bitches and Meek Mills, I don't know. Meek Mills is in jail. Now he got Lori Harvey on his wish list. I don't know when he wrote those bars. I hope she was at least 19. Mm. Tamar and Candy. <sighs> Y'all, I go back and forth with Tamar. Because I, I, mean, I had Tamar album with Don't Wanna Love Me. But I don't know, because Tamar is doing entirely too much lately. You can tell she's depressed. I don't know if no one, everyone notices. Most people in the industry don't look happy. Like everyone be rich. Everyone wants to be rich. Everyone wants to be famous. But most of these rich and famous people don't look happy at all. And then think about this. Imagine your ass is hungry, and you want to go to McDonald's. Ugh. And you want to go to, I eat White Castle. I eat a lot sometimes. And you want to go to White Castle. Before you even leave the house, you have to call your bodyguard, your manager, your agent to tell them that you're fucking hungry. And, you're, and they have to convince you to let somebody else go because you don't want to worry about your safety. That must be fucking scary. Let's go for a walk in the park and say, okay, let me call the bodyguards. That must be fucking, these people are not free, y'all. These people are fucking caged animals that come out to amuse us like circus acts. And they seem more cool and shit when it's, you see them in their trucks and their money and shit. But you see how lonely and miserable and the drug problems and the and the mental health problems they have. And then they constantly have to work. They don't have nine to five jobs. They need to bring in that fucking check. They constantly have to work. I'm sorry, I got off the whole topic of Tamar and Candy. So Tamar and Candy are on Celebrity Big 
Brother. I don't watch that. Be Brick Brother, UK, whatever. I don't know where. You can tell they put the two black girls with the beef, and they're gonna be the black girls who. And they have a beef over friendship. I don't know if Tamo's on drugs, allegedly. But I don't know. Candy says she don't do drugs, but Candy, I don't know. Candy, Candy mood is weird. Like nobody be noticing that. They be like, Candy's so sweet. First of all, Candy can't sing. I write better songs. I don't want to say I write better songs than Candy. Let me not take away her accomplishment. But the girl can't sing. And you gotta give her credit for that because she came out with you had to sing. Like nowadays she'd have been lit, but back in the day you had to sing. She could sing, but I don't know. People hype her more than she should be hyped. She shouldn't be a solo artist. She's a good group singer. She's a good bass. She's a good backup singer. You know, a choir singer. So they're having beef right now over Tamika, over their friendship with Tiny and Monica. Just over relevancy. I don't fucking know, y'all. I don't watch the show. I just find it really sad that these two bitches in their 40s are still on TV fighting for high school friendship issues like I have a few friends right now that's not talking to me we we just decided we ain't gonna be friends so bye bitch like what we gonna do cry you can't it, life is a constant thing it never fucking stops if people are gonna be with you they're gonna be with you they're gonna they're gonna so let them bye bitch there's a door bitch like you can't beg people to be in life. I have a lot of friends that are wonderful people, but they have a lot of mental health problems. I don't have time for that shit. Especially people that's not trying to adjust their shit. I have family members that do mad drugs. We're getting too old for this shit. We feel people, us as humans, feel loyal to people because we feel we know them, we feel bad for them. Fuck that. You need to be loyal to yourself. I know I'm off topic here, but the one thing our parents never taught us, they taught us everything else, how to share, how to work, how to be slaves, how to do this, how to do that, how to believe what teachers say, all that shit. But the one thing they never taught us was how to care for ourselves, how to be nice to ourselves. Be nice to that girl. Don't hit. Don't do this. But what about your fucking self? You need to learn how to sit down sometimes. You need to learn how to be alone. You need to learn how to play by yourself. You need to learn how to be good by yourself. That's one thing our parents feel when they, when they try to raise us. Not everybody. So the Tamar and Candy thing, I'm just like, fuck y'all bitches. Y'all bitches is grown. Y'all bitches got money. Y'all bitches are still dumb. But I understand they're chasing them checks. Them bitches be chasing checks, not thinking about the culture. Could y'all bitches just sit down or kumbaya? And I know bitches in their 40s. I gotta stop cursing, but I'm trying to talk to y'all the way I would talk to my friends because this is all friends. To be friends, be besties, be ow, bitch, ow, this kitchen table talk, bitch. Yeah, this bitch is friends. I got a lot of energy, guys. I'm really excited. I can even make a YouTube video in a minute. And I just want to make a lighter one because there's so much I can talk about the dark and down and shit. But I'm tired of being down all the time. Anyway, so Tamar and Candy, get the shit together, ladies. We don't have time for this. Y'all bitches is old. Y'all bitches is rich. And I don't get why Candy keeps going on shows and she don't want to have no personality. She just want to be like, ooh, the eyes. And then she just got this fucking neutral ass voice, this neutral ass face. Is that the right word? Not neutral. Just like, you know what I mean? Just one tone, one tone face, one tone voice, one tone personality. Just like, Hi, I'm Candy Barris, and I don't drink, and I don't smoke, but I just like fucking bitches in the dungeon with my husband, allegedly. Anyway, and Tamar, too. So Tamar got issues, issues on top of issues. And the more I dip into the diamond of Tamar, the more I see that this Braxton family is not as glamorous as it makes it sound. Everybody want to have the Jacksons and be the Kardashians, but no one know how the fuck these people keep it together. These people got issues, and they keep it together with millions and millions of dollars, Tamar. Y'all have to keep it together. But anyway, who, who calling me? Hold on, let's see. They can wait. They can wait, get y'all here, you know? So let me see, I wrote my shit down. I'm trying to be organized, y'all. So I talked about Trey Songs, Future, Meek Mills, Tamar Candy. All right, Aaliyah. I was gonna make a whole video on this topic, but I'm really scared. And then I'm a really big Aaliyah fan, but when I was younger, I was like in her ass. I wanted to beat her Aaliyah. You couldn't tell me I had the eye. I used to only wear my hair parted straight. So, like I said, I was doing research on Aaliyah. I don't want to share this shit. I feel bad. I feel like I'm hurting her. And they have a soul train to immortalize these people that it's like, I feel like I'm almost disrespecting her by talking about her. But So I was doing research on Aaliyah. Because I was going to make a follow-up video just about Aaliyah and things I noticed about her. 
that I didn't notice when I was younger, you know, when you're younger, you don't see things. The first thing I noticed about Leah is that she may have had a drug problem. Ugh, I hate to say that. I hate to say that. Her nose changed so much. Like, it got really skinny. It got really flared out. It was really crazy. And, oh, allegedly. Oh, I hate to say that shit. But if you look at pictures, I was doing, I was doing research for like two weeks on this shit. And then, and I think the drug problem came from the abuse of R. Kelly. And then when you look at pictures of Aaliyah, oh, it's breaking my heart to talk about this, y'all. When you look at pictures of Aaliyah, she doesn't look happy. And when I was younger, I thought she was just being a badass. But you can tell she was like extremely, extremely hurt, and shy shelter and she only came out to sing and perform I was like damn Ali I remember one time when I was younger I was a Leah fan and she disappeared and they said she went back to school to finish high school and I remember I was like yeah she went to Detroit School of Music I have I have a book of Leah I'm gonna show you guys one day I have lots of books I used to take with articles and shit when I was younger and I still have them because you know I'm gonna throw Aaliyah in the garbage and be 2 k and all but Aaliyah was the most and then the last, I'm not gonna go in, but the last thing, because there's so much more I can say, but I'm really trying not to, fuck it. Jay-Z and Dame Dash 2, Aaliyah came out at 15. R. Kelly was fucking her at 15. He married her at 16. She got away from R. Kelly, and then she, she died at 22, y'all. Y'all gotta remember that. Now, did her birthday come after she died? Or before? She died around 21, 22, and she had already dated Jay-Z, and she was dating Dame Dash, who were still grown-ass men at the time. like. She still was being passed around on the low, you know what I mean? I don't know, guys. And the last part that I read in Aaliyah's, if you look up Aaliyah's autopsy from Bahamas, the coroner said she died from burns, severe burns. But he also said she generally had a weak heart. If you look at that picture of Aaliyah, she's really skinny. And I'm thinking maybe she had like some kind of heart disease. Uh, I can't really put my finger on it because after I saw that, I kind of stopped because it made me feel a little bad. And I feel like Aaliyah's health wasn't in the best shape. And it was, that's probably why she took so much breaks. Because you notice by Aaliyah, she'll come out, she'll drop an album, she'll disappear for a year or two. And they say she's focusing on a movie, she's focusing on school. But I think her health was declining. I'm not saying that she didn't die in a plane crash because a lot of people did die in a plane crash that were with her. What I'm saying is, let me tell you what the autopsy said, what the person who did the autopsy said. They said that even if she would have survived the crash, she would have died because her heart was generally weak. I Google what a generally weak heart means, and there's no way the plane crash caused her heart to be generally weak. There's no way getting a plane caused her heart to be generally weak. Aaliyah had a heart condition or some kind of condition. I don't want to put no words out there. And these are not, I don't even want to say legacy, because you could go look that shit up yourself. That's just wrong, because I feel weird. Rest in peace, baby girl. I just feel weird talking about Aaliyah. Like, <laughs> now, the last thing I want to address is, I'm not even going to talk about R. Kelly no more. Like, who? Who? R. Who? Kelly Rowland. You said her name wrong. You said the R go after Kelly. But anyway, and then the last thing I'm, I was gonna talk about Future and Russell Williams, Wilson, but I really don't want to give Future no play. Future has multiple fucking children. He is R. Kelly, but with grown bitches. He has bitches all over, having children, fucking bitches. And Future is a lame ass black man who out here making songs about getting high, and fucking doing drugs, being on lean. And this nigga don't do no drugs besides bitches. That's his only drug. His addiction to fucking fucking girls who believe he can save them. You know, once you get that superhero superiority, you get that godlike complex. It's like you, you, and you. And people were so mad. Chris Brown was allegedly called on rape. Why do you know Chris Brown didn't rape that bitch? Because he Chris Brown. That's why Chris Brown get bitches. Maybe Chris Brown, this bitch said no. Chris Brown say, I'm Chris Brown, bitch, I get bitches. I'm not saying Chris Brown ain't here raping bitches, but y'all out here defending niggas and not knowing anything. And of course, if you're a fucking girl, you ain't gonna say he raped you. Of course, he Chris Brown would get fucking crucified. But stop, stop defending people you don't know. Because Chris Brown's a whole fucking crackhead. I'm sorry, I love Chris Brown, but he's a whole fucking crackhead. I don't know if you looked at the nigga lately. If you love Chris Brown, tell that nigga to stop doing crack. Tell that nigga he's killing himself. Tell that nigga he like a skeleton. Tell that nigga he ain't handsome no more. He look crazy. Why do you think Karuchi left? Karuchi ain't leave because he's beating her ass. Karuchi would have stayed a couple more years, get that fame up. She would have been famous faster. You know what I'm saying? She would have been act a better actor faster. That bitch left because he was doing drugs and he was extremely beating the fuck out of her. 
and she said it in a and I'm gonna fix my life shit. He pushed me down a flight of stairs. I saw a picture of her walking behind me. He was making fun of her butt with his friends. Like, and she was just walking like, because bitches do anything for fame. And fame ain't shit for people knowing your name. Fame don't come with money. Fame don't have no promises. Fame don't come with long life. Fame don't come with a good life. Fame don't come with good health, good nothing. It's just people know your fucking face. Bitches out here risking their kids, their life, their, their health, their sanity for fame. And it don't come with no fucking promises. But besides that, I might recognize your motherfucking face. And it's sad. Since I'm 20 minutes in, I'm going to shut the fuck up. You know, because I had one more topic. <laughs> I was going to talk about Anamia. 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 That's not that big. What's that real bitch? What's that bitch real name? Because that bitch name is not Anamia. Ain't that bitch name like Karen or fucking Anamia? Because that bitch name, I'm sorry, y'all, because that bitch name is not Anamia. That bitch name is Rhonda Eva Harris. So, Miss Rhonda Eva Harris. This bitch real name is Rhonda. So Miss Rhonda, she has, I used to be one of the people, well, now I ain't gonna fix my life because it's an elder out here helping black people. Now this bitch ain't helping people no more. This bitch out here trying to get raided now. She out here trying to expose secrets in the black community. Not that that's wrong, but the way she's doing this shit don't feel like it's healing anymore. At one point it used to feel like it was healing. Now I feel like it's judging. Now I feel like it's shaming. Now I feel like it's hurting. And now I feel like she feel like she that shit. And, and she don't, she's not even a real psychologist, y'all. This bitch don't have no fucking medical shit. This bitch, this bitch and Rhonda ever, Eva Harris, don't have no fucking education. Like, let me just make sure. Because I know this bitch ain't a doctor. She's not a doctor, no. You know what they never call her doctor? And it just pissed me off how this bitch is over here. In people's minds, hearts, and family, like in their head. This bitch don't have no experience but decides being born. Okay, she's from Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn. Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? But anyway, she was a, a teenage mom. She got beat. The only thing this bitch could give niggas is don't be like me. I was a crackhead. I was abused. I was a young mother. Now this bitch out here talking about talking to people like Duchess, who's already ahead of her in life. In life. About being reality TV show famous. But bitch, you're reality TV show famous. And it's getting to the point where I, I, was, I can't even watch it because it's like now it's getting so disgusting or so disturbing that I don't feel comfortable watching this shit. Because it's not inter it's becoming entertainment, people's problems. And that's the problem with the world right there. I'm going to stop right now, guys. Tell me what you think about these, these topics. Tell me what you think down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back next time for, I don't know, let's see what happens kind of video. <laughs> and I miss you guys. I'm happy to see you guys. I hope you guys are doing great. Peace of love from Brooklyn. It's your girl.